Hey guys, I am here. It's been a while since I've actually posted one of these sort of interviews on YouTube. This will be on my podcast as well, but I am here with Ahumna and I've practiced saying her name, so I made sure I got it right. But um, this is going to be a totally different kind of setup than I usually do because Ahumna is new to me. Her teachings are new to me. And um, she just has a really important code when it comes to regritting the astrals in terms of how we think of abundance and how we actually anchor it in into our physical vessels. And so I'm going to allow her to introduce herself, introduce a little bit of um, what she does. Her business is called Soulful Luxury. And I know she's all about abundance, all about manifesting. So she fits perfect with the whole message of the abundance matrix. And I'm excited to dive in. I feel, I was telling her before we hit record, I feel like this whole new shifting of people that are, that are going to be tuning into this conversation. And I really am excited to see what comes of it. So um, let's just dive right in. I'm going to allow you to introduce yourself to everybody and just kind of whatever you want to share about what you do in your background. Yeah, absolutely. Hello, everyone. And it's a home now, Maya. So I am an event inventor and an architect. That is how I describe myself because I have invented now multiple different healing modalities and tools and technologies that allow us to quickly bring ourselves into resonance with the life that we are here to live mm -hmm. and to heal, like deeply heal and integrate the information that is currently standing in the way of us living in our highest dharmic path. Mm -hmm. So that has been through my quantum money frequencies, which are a set of quantum biofeedback frequencies that I brought through and have had five years now of working with hundreds of people with these frequencies that help work through all of the different things in our multidimensional experience beyond just our body and our immediate you know beliefs and mindset and really bringing all parts of ourselves back into alignment with what is what I believe the ultimate truth that we are here to be abundant we are here to be provided for we are here to be well resourced mm -hmm. in ways that allow us to thrive and from there I've in invented the money meridian system which is a deep healing of our energetic body working with our meridians and working with finding exactly where in our body we are actively pushing money away mm -hmm. mainly because my belief is that we're not here to make money we are here to receive what is meant for us mm. and most people are pushing money away yeah pushing opportunities away and pushing away what is actually meant for them because of fear trauma pain family conditioning societal conditioning all the things that put us into a box of limitation and I just got off a call actually teaching my final leg like, invention, at least in the wealth space, which is the wealth blueprint that works with over 50 celestial suns, asteroids, planetary mm -hmm. bodies to really paint a clear picture of our unique experience in this life of wealth and success. Because the most important thing for us all is that we find what is ours to create, what is our desire for success and we stop comparing ourselves to how other people are doing it and what other people's visions of success are and we find what is ours because we will never truly be wealthy which to me means healthy mm -hmm. happy at peace and provided for financially when we're chasing someone else's ideas of success yes so that is a brief intro into my work that has a lot of lenses of galactic and spiritual and esoteric context within it. Yes, I love it because that's the those are the waters that I dive in. And I'm super curious because when we talked about what our topic was going to be, you brought up quantum money. And instantly I just lit up because I could I could feel and I can almost see the blueprint of what you're talking about, but I would love to hear the language that you've um, pulled through for that. And particularly when you were just sharing about how 
it seems like if I were to use my words to describe what you said, it feels like what you're saying is that people have been pushing money away. And I would say because they're in mimic, because they we've been programmed to 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 say we want this or we should have this or we should go there. And I think that alone can pull us out of our authentic urge, which pulls in what's authentically meant to be ours, like you said, lining up to what is for us. I feel like the mimic program in terms of society is what kind of hypnotizes people out of their out of their urge. And I feel like quantum money is somewhere in here in terms of the actual alignment of it. So I'd love to hear your perspective on that and what you mean when you say quantum money. Mm -hmm. So to understand quantum money, we first get to understand what is called linear money. And that would be what that mimic program, as you call it, is chasing right? This linear path to financial freedom. And that could look like money comes to me through this job that I work and I get a paycheck and money only comes to me through that paycheck. Mm -hmm. Or it could be money comes to me through unemployment and money only comes to me through unemployment or through disability or through an inheritance. It is this lens where we create one linear path for money to come into our lives. And through that, we are ultimately limiting our omnipresent, omnipotent creative capacities, which is what quantum money is about, which is when we open ourselves up to being provided for in all ways mm -hmm. and for money to show up to us from anywhere mm -hmm. at any time. The key, though, is that we actually have to open ourselves up to that because we've been so deeply conditioned by these programs to believe that there is only one path to financial freedom, mm -hmm. thus constricting our energy and therefore constricting how much money we can actually receive right. and creating a lot of pressure and stress on our power. Mm -hmm and how much power energy we're able to run through our body and therefore hold as money. Right. So when you were mentioning the biofrequencies and the things that you've created to help shift the energy in the body, is is it, would you say it's directly connected to this, to the programming and conditioning that sort of has us, I would say in our central nervous system, in our chemical composure, repelling money. So there's something, in, it feels like a deep, alchemy and in our bodies, like a deep healing and a restoration with what it feels like to thrive in the body. So I'm curious, like how the biofrequencies or what, I'm not sure if that's exactly what you called them, but how those work with it and how you even got the idea to create those. Yeah. So it's quantum biofeedback is a type of technology that was originally invented in Russia and Germany back like during world war II, I believe. So you know, 40 something years, it's been around and it's making its way into modern like healing spaces and things like that, because it is also a very powerful tool for healing the body, healing the mind, healing the emotions and working through energy. This was four and a half years ago. Now I was working primarily with people one-on-one -on -one as a mentor and a coach and I got this message from, you know, my spirit guide that said, you need to stop doing one-on-one -on -one coaching. Mm -hmm. And that was a very interesting initiation because that was where I was making all my money. <laughs> and I was like, all right, well, you want me to give up this, this area that is providing for me financially right now. That being said, at that point in my life, I was just so committed to always listening to my intuition because at that time it had not steered me wrong yet. So mm -hmm. I was going to keep showing up. So I did. I let go of all my clients. I was basically guided to buy this quantum biofeedback technology before doing that, not really having any idea what I was going to be using it for. And after my last session with the final client that I was finishing up, I entered into this trance state and next thing I know, I'm like being shown all of these numbers and symbols and plants and codes and I'm just writing them down, not having any idea what it's for yet, right? Mm -hmm. I'm just like listening. Okay, this is what I'm being shown. 
different elements of nature, like gold, silver, um, uranium, palladium, these are all minerals, right? All these different minerals, all these different trees and plants, all these different statements and actual like number sequences. And after I came out of that, I was basically shown that this was all a set of frequencies that would allow for our bodies to work through what they need to work through energetically to open back up to the quantum field of receiving. Mm -hmm. So the technology that I had purchased is there's several different types of quantum biofeedback technology. I work with three different types, but this one specifically allows you to actually imprint your own frequencies. Oh, interesting. So this whole list of things, I found them all and imprinted them into this technology to create their frequency signature. Mm -hmm. And this is when the quantum money frequencies were created and pretty quickly, like instantaneous. I mean, they work so fast and we started seeing people get money into put in their mailbox, like cash, no envelope, <laughs> no letter in their mailbox. People were getting, uh, like ComEd or, you know, like uh, electric bill companies, things like that. They're getting back pay from 10, 15 years ago. Wow. They're getting promotions, raises, all these different pathways, inheritance mm -hmm. that people didn't even know this type of money was in their family. And all of a sudden this inheritance comes through. And the beautiful thing about working in the quantum is that when we work on ourselves, we're working on everyone that is energetically connected to us. So we are working on our family. We are working on behalf of our children. We are working on behalf of our ancestors, even if we don't know them, which is why things start to then shift in our parents' life, mm -hmm. in our children's life with their finances, with their health. And to me, like, I think that we all have a dollar amount that is meant for us to hold the responsibility of. Mm -hmm. And that has nothing to do with how worthy we are or how valuable we are because we are all equally incredibly valuable and so fucking worthy mm -hmm. that it's like beyond measure yeah but the dollar amount is about how much responsibility for others we're here to hold in this life yes right? yeah. that's it and some of us our responsibility is to actually tend the land mm -hmm. to provide food to clean up the environment. Some of us are meant to steward businesses that impact the changes that need to happen on the planet. Those two responsibilities need a different amount of money. Yeah. Right. But everyone, everyone here, I believe, and it's my mission, is meant to have enough money to thrive. Mm. We should not have people hungry. We should not have people without clothes, without homes, without all of that is based on this whole scarcity lie and this this virus that has been plugged into our program yeah so as far as like the dollar amount like i'm not trying to make you x amount of money mm -hmm. my goal my purpose what feels the most honest and integral is to help people have a healthy and happy relationship with what is meant for them mm. and to feel at peace <laughs> with their finances yeah. with money so that they're no longer pushing away this beautiful this beautiful earth has so many resources for us and and it's just trying to give forth all these creative potentials and it's time that we open ourselves up and actually let ourselves receive mm, yes that nervous system receive it mm -hmm. we're here to receive and even studying like analyzing people who have held a lot of money. I've had people in my life who were billionaires and millionaires, and that's not my upbringing. I always find it's important to express that because people can create a narrative that what I'm saying is not available to them because they think that, you know, I must have grown up with money and have had no money troubles and all these things when, you know, my mother is physically disabled and she had me at 18. So with her, I lived in a trailer park and we moved from trailer park to trailer park because she could not pay the bills. And I was even molested because she could not pay bills. Mm -hmm. And then my father is a farmer and he worked really, really hard to get into, you know, 
engineering and computer world and to, to create some freedom for me. That was now like, you have to work really, really, really hard. Mm -hmm. And that programming almost killed me. I almost died from a neurological condition and I had no money to pay for this massive journey. I was legally blind for three years. Wow. And at that point in my life, I had to, to survive, truly heal my relationship with money mm -hmm. because I needed it to pay for all these modalities that I was going to need to really heal, not to just take a pill and suppress what was happening and pretend like, you know, whatever. I wanted to be a person who heals yeah. really. So my focus at that point was healing my relationship with money because I needed it and it, it changed and evolved and it expanded and opened up all these doorways. And I see so many people feel limited by, you know, I can't heal because I don't have the resources for this, or I can't do this because I don't have the resources. So I started to see that if we really just address our belief that we are not resourced mm -hmm. and reclaim our power to receive like through this process, like I was healing my money wounds and money, the exact amount that I would need for this next like neuroscientist would come in and I would have the money that I would need to fly to this other expert, like in Canada and all these places, like the money kept showing up. And I was like, wow, when I stop limiting and believing that I don't have what I need to thrive, it actually starts coming to me. Yes. Wow. I want to go back to something that you said, which just lit me up. And it's, I feel like it's connected to this journey you're talking about and healing our relationship with money. You talked about um, when we allow ourselves to, at the deepest core level, when we dissolve those programs, those core programs in lack, we open up to the quantum field. You said to reopen up to the quantum field. And what I felt when you said that is the identity that is connected to lack has to dissolve the the ways that we repel what is meant for us and there's something about when you said also that it's it's a we we will be well resourced to steward whatever we're meant to do here like we will be financed for that i think that's right there one of the deepest wounds on our planet is that we we feel collectively abandoned because we've been in this system for so long so i feel like what you're saying is connected to such a huge identity shift you almost have to die to who you used to be and become something new. And that sounds like that's what your story is. Like, I mean, I can feel the power of it. I can feel the power of, of that space of where you open to the quantum field. How, what would you say was the hardest part about the shift for you about like kind of going through that death and rebirth? Well, I mean, <laughs> the, the physiological disabilities was definitely mm -hmm. the hardest piece but when we're speaking specifically to money I would say the most challenging part was when I had to recognize that I created this massive health crisis because I did not know how to ask other people for help Gosh. and I did not know how to let myself receive help from others and that might receive money from others mm -hmm. I had I had this like deep program that I had to go and do it all myself to make the money to build the business to push 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 and that that burnout was really just this part of me that was hiding and masking very deep neurological nervous system imbalances mm -hmm. and I finally created the right scenario with my beloved that I felt for the first time actually safe with another human where I could like breathe mm -hmm. and the moment that I felt that safety was like oh all these things around my body were finally able to reveal themselves and that big one was that I felt like I had to do it all on my own and when it comes to money, that's tied into, I have to make all the money on my own. I have to go out and I have to, to force and to push and to fight and to, you know, grind and to work really hard, even if it means 
pretending like these significant symptoms that I'm having in my body or this fatigue or this confusion or all, all this stress, the anxiety to pretend like that's not happening because I have to keep pushing. Mm -hmm. That is basically fundamentally this toxic program that yeah. stops us from actually being supported by life. Yeah. So that was really the hardest one because that meant that I had to not only look at my money story, I had to look at my self-worth. I had to look at how I operated, how my nervous system was functioning, how I was in relationship to the people around me and to really practice asking for help, asking for support, asking people for money, even at times. Mm -hmm. Wow. Wow. I can just feel everything you're saying in my gut. Like it's amazing. I've, I've not that I've had similar physical conditions, but I feel like I just relate so deeply to what you're saying. Um, it's kind of blowing me away. Cause I wasn't really sure. Like I said, I wasn't really sure what was going to come up today. Um, also I'm curious. I want to go back to something when you just said as well, I was thinking about um, when, okay. So when people feel really deeply, well, let me just actually talk about you as you were going through that. And um, as you got to the core belief of your self-worth and you were um, dissolving that belief, that right there, I feel like is for most people, it, it, there's so much resistance to dissolving a belief for some reason. I think we're just used to it. It's familiar. Um, it's, it's connected to identity. But I'm just curious, like if you have any tips that you give people when they're right there and they're working, because I feel like it sometimes it takes a little bit. There's an integration piece when you're dissolving, you get to the core program and you're dissolving it. What, do, what kind of tips do you have for people that are in that spot? Mm -hmm. So there is this saying, this word from the, the Vipassana meditation tradition, it's called Aditana. And it is the core foundational virtue on the path to enlightenment. And it means you must have strong determination. Mm. And to me, I have it even tattooed on my arm after navigating through moments when I wanted to give up, give up on life, give up on all the things. And it, it's very easy. It's so much easier to just be mediocre. Mm -hmm. It's so much easier to be sick. It's so much easier to be financially stressed. And hearing that you may think this isn't easy. <laughs> Trust me, I know it's not easy to be on your deathbed. It is actually easier though than doing what it takes to truly heal, to truly be free, to truly be resourced because that means you have to be willing to die mm -hmm. over and over and over again. You have to be willing to let go of everyone in your life, of everything that you've believed, of all the shit that is surrounding you and constantly trying to give you this feedback of you being limited, mm -hmm. of you not being enough, of you not being worthy, of you not having the opportunities because you were born into a certain race or a certain religion or a certain country and all these things that are constantly giving people the feedback that they can't be more. Mm -hmm. right? So strong determination has to be at your core. And in order to cultivate that I found means I have to know what my higher why is mm -hmm. like, what is my devotion in this life? For me, it's spiritual growth. And whether we want to call it enlightenment, whether we want to call it ascension, whether we want to call it integration, which is what I personally resonate with, like soul level embodiments. Mm -hmm. I am here for spiritual growth. And that is what drives me. That's what keeps me disciplined. That's what keeps me determined. That's what keeps me alive when I really wanted to give up. So knowing what that is, like knowing what maybe it is your children, right? Maybe that deeper why is providing for a different life for your children. Maybe that deeper why is you know you're here to be stewarding a cleaner earth. 
right? You, you must know what that deeper soul level devotion is because that is going to carry you through the moments when you want to give up, carry you through the moments when shit hits the fan, carry you through the moments when you have to dissolve the identity that you have associated with for potentially decades of your life. Yep. And if you don't believe in that and believe in yourself, then it's going to be impossible to let go of beliefs that other people have given you. Mm -hmm. You have to believe in yourself as well. And, and this, I find that this connection to higher consciousness, this connection to spirit, to God, to whatever language people want to utilize carries me through those moments. Mm. Would you say that why finding your why is connected to um, that con knowing what you're going to be sourced, resourced for? Like you were saying, like knowing what it is that you're called to do, there's a, a certain amount of money that is required for that. Would you say that the knowing your why helps you get to the, to that, to knowing what you're here to steward or to, to bring forth? Yeah, absolutely. I, for me, the, what we're here to steward and bring forth is our creative genius, mm -hmm. right? So there is something that I believe every single person here is meant to steward and bring forth something new, yeah, something unique and artistry that is meant to come through only you. Mm -hmm. right? It's as unique as your fingerprint. And that cannot awaken if we are not devoted to yeah. life. Yep. So that understanding of what is my why, what am, what can I devote myself to? What is this higher power that I'm connected to, that I'm a part of? And if you're not connected to that yet, it's going to be very difficult to get information from it because that's where your creative genius comes from. It comes from that devotion to consciousness, yeah, to spirit, to growth. That is when that those higher insights come through and you're like, up at all hours and you know I wrote a 200 page book in 48 hours earlier this week just doo -doo 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 -doo. like that's what's available to all of us mm -hmm. yes you're speaking my language and it's one of the reasons I love talking about abundance and talking about the technology of it because I feel like there's a lot of creative genius in people who are um kind of connected to that spiritual realm that often it hasn't been fully pulled through in terms of mainstream, you know, and I feel like there's language connected to it. There's, there's just, there's so much that's so unique. And I love inspiring even just conversation around how our creative technology works, which in my mind includes our psychic technology mm -hmm. and everything that is connected to our intuition. And so to me, it feels like that's what you're really tapping into is, is your own creative technology. And I think, I love that you said creative genius is what we're here to bring forth because what I've found about the places that light me up like that is it's so, it's seemingly, it can seem in terms of the mainstream world, so strange, so out there, but it's amazing how much I light up when, when I'm talking about human technology, for example, or mm -hmm. our creative tech or how the abundance matrix works, you know, or just how the, the meta text of the, of the matrix works. It's just fascinating to me because there's so much available to us in terms of what we can do that I feel like bypasses all the steps that we do in lack, you know, but if we could just go get to the source of the programming, which I feel like is what you're really tapping into, even with these biofrequencies and the, the work that you're doing there, I'm just fascinated by it. So what kind of um, programs and stuff do you offer? Cause I know you, you do a few things. You don't do one-on-one -on -one anymore, but this is what you teach, correct? Yeah. So Primarily all of my money, healing, coach, like coaching, teaching, because I have multiple different like trainings, it all happens now inside of the quantum money community. Mm -hmm. And in that space, it's not just me facilitating, I actually bring in experts in the world of the finance, mm -hmm. because I personally, as I started to heal my relationship with money, I started to feel disconnected and like certain things that we are conditioned to believe we have to do in order to live in this world, like buy into a lot of illegal taxation principles and debt systems and all of these things that are selling our soul away basically to these 
governments that don't give a shit about any of us. And, you know, why is it that Amazon doesn't pay taxes and a farmer who makes like barely anything does and has to fight to keep his farm alive? It's because they know something that we don't. Yeah. So there came that point when I was like, man, I need to find these people. And so we started bringing experts in that teach people how to become truly sovereign financially as well. And we bring in experts every month. And then I teach a new training every month where right now is I just got off of a three day wealth blueprint training that we're doing in there. And then we run the frequencies every single day, Monday through Friday for people. And that's a year long journey that people come in and commit to because it's, you know, healing your relationship with money is not a quick, quick thing. Yeah. And it's important to note that I'll share a little story about um, this, where I'm at right now, my next stage, because every layer of new energy that you can hold and you say you want to expand and and you know that you're meant to be making, you know, $20,000 a month and you're currently making five and you've never made more than five or $20, right? Like you've never made more than that. That's a stretch. Mm -hmm. And to make that jump, you have to face what is in between it, what's in the gap. And that's beliefs about yourself, that's stories about yourself. And it is another layer of your worth. Mm -hmm. So at every next jump, there is stuff. And that's why I find that to me, money my simple definition of what money is, is it's spirit. Mm -hmm. And it is, and it can be a massive catalyst on our spiritual journey of discovering who we are, how powerful we are, and of claiming, reclaiming that power. Mm -hmm. So at every stage, every level of your financial growth, there's going to be another layer of healing to do so that you can hold more of yourself. Yeah. And you know, people want these quick fixes and certainly we can create quick income to come in to create stability and to actually hold that long-term requires work. It requires healing. It requires looking at ourselves. And then we want to stretch that and jump into a whole new timeline that is available. Mm -hmm. It means another layer of work to do. I recently was giving a talk in Seattle and some of my old neurological symptoms were showing up and I hadn't had any of the symptoms in like eight months. So it was a little alarming. I had this like amazing opportunity that felt like this next stage of my Dharma. Mm -hmm. And I get there and my brain is like, and I'm like, okay, my body is revealing to me that this leap that I just made, it's not ready for. Mm -hmm. Right. So I sat in prayer and I went into one of the techniques that I teach every Monday in the community, reprogramming our unconscious. And I called in $20,000 to support me in healing. And I did not say where it was to come through. I didn't say I need to make it my business because I was on vacation and I was not about to work that week. So I wasn't going to limit myself to, oh, this is going to come through my business. Mm -hmm. Right. That's linear creation. And it serves a purpose at times, especially like if you're launching a program, sure. Focus on that program growing. That being said, if you're just wanting to be resourced for something that is going to help you step into this next version, then don't limit how you call forth that resource. Yeah. And I said, this is for my healing. I didn't say what the healing was going to be. I didn't say how it was going to come through. And an hour later, my partner gets a phone call and it's this incredible man that he's working with. My partner is in the health field. He's been consulting with doctors around the world for like 25 years now. And, and this man is like healing autism. He's healing complex neurological traumas. I mean, he is top of the line masters working with stem cells and basically got on the phone with me and offered to do a treatment for me at no cost, which is a $25,000 treatment. Wow. Wow. So I was like, wow, here it is, you know, because money comes to us in any way, Mm -hmm. right? Any way at all. We receive in any way. And it is the creation of that because I asked for healing. 
mm-hmm. and I received that. Yeah. And afterwards, there was this period where I started to feel just off, not like myself anymore. And I was working with my acupuncturist. He's like, your energy is so contracted. Do you feel that? And I'm like, yeah, that's what I'm telling you. I don't feel like myself right now, you know? And because he's like, normally you take up this whole space. And right now you're like here. And during my treatment, I'm like working with my money meridians, assessing what's going on. And whilst I have received that amount of money in my business time and time again, I've never just been gifted Mm -hmm. that amount of money. Yeah. With no exchange on my behalf, just fully receiving support Mm -hmm. at that level before. And that brought up a deeper layer of my worth. Yeah. Who am I to receive what other people also need? Mm-hmm. Right? And so I got to work through that and stretch through that and open myself up to receiving such a large gift and it not contracting me in any way wow. so that the next stage of what I'm here to hold is now open through this because I truly Like I was calling in this experience where I want to be that person. I want to be the person who's so resourced that I can be so generous with my money and help people Mm -hmm. and and just gift people because people have given me those opportunities. Yeah. So, you know, I like to share that story because this literally is happening now in my life. I'm going to get this treatment in two weeks. So it's like fresh and I've done a lot of work and another layer came up. Like another layer for me to now stretch my capacity to receive showed yeah. up. Yeah. And it always comes back to another layer of our worth. Mm-hmm. So for me, money healing is an initiation into our spirit. And it it is one that is not to be rushed. I mean, it, there's stages, there's growth, there's stretching, there's contracting, there's expanding moments. Then there's moments of integration and it can be beautiful, especially when we're supported by other people who are also on that path yeah. and who get it. Exactly. Because you, we can't go, I couldn't go into like a bank and have this conversation with a budgeting financial advisor at my bank. They'd be like, this bitch is crazy. <laughs> right? Exactly. So We need spaces where we can have these conversations about our emotions, about the stretch, about the growth, about the process, about the integration, and about the changes that we want to make to become who we are. And that's why I created this social community, because when two or more are gathered, that's when we really initiate our power. And no one's here to do this work alone. Mm -hmm. Money is a collective wound. Yes. Oh, that's so good. It's so true. And the more that each of us resonate out a different belief, that belief and that energy is more contagious. It's that kind of um, exponentiation that happens when we resonate out powerfully. And I think that's especially why there seems to be a lot of focus right now on like the spiritual community healing their relationship to money, because often being spiritual and having money have been you know, opposed in our programming, or we have felt like they are two separate things. And I love what you're saying about, I feel like at a deeper level, it's reestablishing our intimacy with, with spirit, with source and our trust that we will be provided for. I love that you say we will be resourced. I love that. And that this example that you gave with this gift, I think often we I I at least know for me, I often feel like I have to be the one that pays for it directly. Even gifting can feel like it's, there's all this weird programming attached to it. So I I love that that this ability to be able to receive at a deeper and deeper level and in our central nervous system. I, I love that you said that, like I'm making all these really deep connections between everything I've been feeling, but also just this, the words that you use really pop new codes. I'm so excited about sharing this with people. I love what you're doing. It's, it's exciting. And it, I feel like the more of us that are in our abundance and, and really resonating out abundance codes, we shift things pretty quick. Like that's how we can get things done really quickly. Needs can actually be met rather than going through the middleman of the government, like you said, which usually just pits us against each other and causes more, more trauma to our worth. I think. Absolutely. This creation of this gift that I received was within an hour 
wow. of me claiming it. And I see this all the time with people in my community who are actually doing the work. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The shift can happen very quickly when we're no longer bound by linear time. Mm -hmm. And one thing that just came up to share is I was being interviewed on this summit by this beautiful woman who works with a lot of um, celebrities and people that have pretty big influences and things like that. And she was sharing with me when I told her this story, because it was just a couple of days ago, that that is how we actually really receive. She's like, I watch these people who are experts at receiving and everything that they're receiving. Most of the time, it's not actually a dollar amount. No one's handing them cash, mm -hmm. but they're handing them very valuable experiences, very valuable offerings, very valuable gifts, very valuable things that help them to thrive when they receive it all. How many times have people take a gift and they're like, oh, this is too much. Or, oh, I can't accept that. Mm -hmm. Or someone tries to offer them money and they're like, oh, you know, this is too much. I can't accept that. Right? Yep. If you've ever been in that position and someone has tried to offer you something, whether it's their time, their money, a gift, and you wanted to say, no, it's too much. Really look at that because that right there is the pathway to receiving. If we cannot receive gifts, we cannot receive from others and we're constantly giving, 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 giving. We are completely doing a disservice to our bodies and our bodies will pay the price. Yes. Yes. That was the most palpable part of your story for me. When you said that um, you had created this, this situation in your body, this neurological condition because of your inability to ask for help which is an, which is connected to receiving and i think that that is so prevalent around um, i think it's actually prevalent in the spiritual community i think it's very prevalent and just that we i've had some health issues as, as well that have come up recently um and i've at the core of it felt that ex that's exactly that, that exact thing, because I know the physical stuff I've studied and I can understand what to do in terms of, you know, things that will help me. But the core of it is the exact same thing, the, the not asking for help in particular or feeling shame around needing help or having need. And I think this is a really big code in humanity as a whole, but especially in the spiritual community, it's there's, there's some sort of pride around it or shame around it. I don't know which, maybe both. Um, yeah. but I'm, I'm happy that it's, I can feel that it's shifting because people like you are doing the work, people like me, people that are interested in this conversation. I know so many people right now that absolutely know what you knew, which is that I have to heal my relationship to money to go to the next level. So this mm -hmm. is so relevant. Yeah. And it's important to just reframe that for people who have that trauma bond with money because a lot of people are deeply traumatized by their relationship with money mm -hmm. that healing your relationship with money is actually healing your relationship with your own power yeah it's mm -hmm. healing your relationship with yourself yeah it's healing your relationship with love and it takes time. Like I was talking to this other woman, I was supporting her. She had gone through bankruptcy and she went and saw another money coach. And he was like, you just need to let money back into your life. And she was like, she was like, I was so resistant to everything this man was saying. And I was like, well, basically he was just telling you to let a rapist back into your life. That's how your body interpreted that. Wow. Because to you, you were raped by money. Mm -hmm. You were violated by money. So we can't just tell you to like, hey, if we said, let your rapist back into your life or let that person who murdered your child back into your life, people would think we were nuts. Mm -hmm. right? We have to address the fact that people have had real trauma that money has been a part of. Mm -hmm. And our bodies, our brains, our nervous systems, our amygdalas are programmed to now see money as a threat. Right. which means we are also seeing our creative power as a threat mm -hmm. which makes sense why we've been at such deep war with our creative power 
It's it's very fascinating to me. Like a very deep historical wound, something that I you've probably heard me talk about if you've listened. I know you said you've listened to my podcast, um, but I feel like the war itself that's been just imprinted on this planet for so long it's it uses money at the center of it it all really usually Mm -hmm. ultimately it boils down to ideology but it's like only one one ideology is able to have to receive and have power and to be like have life force brought into it so there's there's been this sort of monopolizing of creative energy and then a manipulation of it so there's, su- I love that you said it, the, the trauma, or the, what, what was the word that you used? Um, you've been, high, you used a very specific word, violated by money. Like, yes, yes. And I think, I love that you point out that that has to be addressed and that there has to be a reframe and a repair around what it even is. And, and at the, at the core level, that it's about our connection to our own power our own creative energy. That is something that's so important to understand. And gosh, I mean, really that's, that's like integration of our whole selves at the deepest level, which makes sense that you would then be a master manifester at that point, because you're no longer afraid of your power. Oh, it's so good. So good. (laughs) All these amazing things that we have claimed, right. In our lives, like all the trauma that we've had as well, we created that. Yeah. Right? We created yeah. everything. So I can understand and have compassion towards why we would have trauma towards our creative capacity. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Because every single human on this earth at this time, even though all of our stories might look different, we've all come to this planet at a time where we've all taken on massive amounts of trauma. Yeah. To process and integrate because this planet has been, you know, the slave planet for a long time. And even money, right? It's important to also make the distinction that the money that people see, those dollar bills or those yens or whatever currency you're working with, that is not real money. Mm -hmm. That is fiat. That is fake money backed by nothing. Real money, real resources. Money was also hijacked and enslaved. Mm -hmm. Right? Most people don't have a trauma bond with real money. Mm. They've been traumatized by fiat mm. currency. Yes. Oof. That's it's the a- enslaving of our creative power and of the resources of the earth. Mm-hmm. So it's a planetary level wound and it takes all of us to address it. Yes. So good. Was there anything else specifically you wanted to touch on or go into before we end this call? Cause I mean, I just love, I love where we've gone. I'll put, by the way, in the show notes for anyone listening in the description box, I'll have um, her information, her links and all of that. But yeah, is there anything else that you want to share? I feel like we should tap on before we close out. Um, I would just share, you know, to be compassionate with yourself, be very gentle with yourself reach out for support. We're talking about things that have been deeply conditioned into your brain and into your operating system of your body. And you must understand how your brain works to reprogram and to release and to heal and to not re-traumatize yourselves. So be gentle, be compassionate, understand what this journey is really about. And you understand what it's really about. It's not about money. It's not about making more money. It's about healing your relationship with yourself. And I do actually have one-on-one offerings available. So I will send you that link. So you can put those there as well, too. Okay. Um, outside of the quantum money community, uh, people do feel like they want to have some deeper support in that journey. Awesome. Well, this has been so good. I've loved this conversation. I feel like we could go, we could have more. <laughs> There's so many places that we could dive into, but I appreciate you joining me and having this conversation and sharing the codes with me because I can feel them big time. So when the first time you messaged me or your assistant messaged me, when I actually, um, I watched one of your videos and then we connected just via email, I knew I could, I, from your story and just from the codes you were popping, I was like, I know that this 
And interestingly enough, one of my very first like awakenings also was somebody, which I didn't realize until you went into the quantum biofeedback was somebody who also did quantum biofeedback. Mm -hmm. And it was a huge shift in my reality. So how strange that when I made that connection, I was like, of course, dead on, but I appreciate you so much. Thank you for joining me. And um, yeah, I'll, if you're interested in anything that pronounce your name for me one more time, Ahomna, Ahomna. If you're interesting, interested in anything that Ahomna offers, you can check out the the all the links in the description box. And yeah, I appreciate you so much. Thanks for coming. Thank you so much, everyone. Bye. Bye.